Hey guys, it's Kelly, and today we are discussing Aka Wall, Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas, which completely destroyed my soul and just left me a heap of emotions and feelings. And yeah, you know when it's, you know when you say a book gave you all the feels, this book gave me all of the feels. I also just want to say this is definitely, definitely going to contain all of the spoils. Like, all the spoilers. So if you haven't read the book and you don't want to get spoilers, please just add this to your watch later list and leave now because I don't want people in the comments being like, you spoiled that book for me because I have given you ample warning. Basically, this book opens with Feyre back at the Spring Court, undercover. She is now High Lady of the Night Court, but no one knows this. And she has to pretend to play nice with Tamlin again. Also, quick note on my lipstick, still carrying on with theme, but unfortunately I have no book to match it to because I had to return it and I'm really sad about that. But I am going to get a hold of hardcovers later this year. I really want the hardcovers. You don't get hardcovers in South Africa, especially not for YA books. So I'm going to have to order them from the book depository and they in September I think are releasing a box set of all three books. So I'm going to get that in September, but for now I have to just deal with not having the books, which is really sad. But in this case kind of works because my green doesn't look so good with the paperback cover. So <laughs> Feyre is back, has to play nice with Tamlin, has to play nice with Ianthi, who can... <sighs> Why does it take her so long to die? Which obviously is not easy for her and is not easy for us as readers because it is Tamlin's fault that she has been ripped away from Resand. it is Tamlin's fault that her sisters have been turned into High Fae, which neither of them want, it is Tamlin's fault that the King of Highburn has returned to full power and is now going to try and kill all of them, and he did this because he was jealous. Why? Why you gotta do that? So we have to deal with Tamlin being his usual tool self, Feyre being upset because she's not with Resand, us being upset because there is no Resand, and feeling very conflicted about Lucian because we want to like him, but he's also Tamlin's bestie. So even from right at the beginning, my cat is sitting on my floor next to me, he just gave me the judgiest look ever. So even right from the beginning, we're just like, pain, misery, torture, all we want is our babies to be back together. And also, at the end of the book, Cassian and his wings, and we don't know what's happened there, so there is just a lot of drama going on in our hearts right now, right? And then there was an Akawal spoilers page on Tumblr, and I didn't want to get proper spoilers for the book, but I did just kind of need to be reassured of a few things, so I'll admit, I looked. Because I needed Akawal in the week it took from the release date to when my book actually arrived. So on the spoiler page they wouldn't tell you specifics, like they wouldn't tell you who died or who got together or whatever, but they'd say things like a main character dies or not everyone gets mated by the end of the book. And one of the things that they said was that Face Sand would be reunited in the first hundred pages I think. And now I'm sitting there on like page 95 and they haven't been reunited yet and I'm just like my babies, you lied. This is not okay. My babies need to be back together, and they got them. They got back together, and the reunion scene was just perfection um, for the whole night court. But you know, especially, I am such trash for face and guys. That reunion scene was just everything. I was literally like, I don't, I don't care about. I was like, it's, it's nice that the rest of the inner circles here. It's nice, but go, go. This is <laughs> time for them. Speaking about face and sexy times. We have still not got a wall scene. Resan promised Feyre, which means he promised us. And there has been no wall scene. None. None of the wall scenes. SJM, when you get around to writing those novellas that you said are basically just fanfic of your own work, please give us the wall scene. He promised. So now, as much as, you know, my fo focus for the first hundred pages was my babies getting back together, there is actually a lot of drama going on and they are under risk of attack by the King of Highburn, which they now have to try and, you know, they have to try and beat him. They have to try and find a way to defeat him, and the only way to do that, pretty much, is for all of the High Lords to come together and work together. Which presents a twofold problem. Number one, everybody hates Resand. They all think that he's evil, they all think that he's a murderer, the Winter Court thinks that he murdered like 20 of their children, and Fae children are extremely rare and therefore extremely precious, so no one likes him. But number one, he has to get all of them to side with him. Number two, Tamlin is one of those High Lords, and he's still kind of pissed that Resand stole his girlfriend. So the, all of the High Lords meet, and 
Tamlin arrives, which no one's really sure if he's going to because they don't really know if he's allied with Highburn, not actually allied with Highburn. It's all very, very complicated at this point and no one really knows if they should trust him. He's very much a wild card in this book. So they're all sitting around having this meeting. People are kind of starting to warm to Reese because they start to see that he's actually a really good guy, the best guy, and Tamlin decides to be his usual tool self and says something to Reese and like, have you noticed that little noise she makes when she climaxes? Now see, I had seen this quote on Instagram already, and in the little text post, this person had that thing that Tamlin says, and then Farah had replied, well with Resand it's not little. So I got to this part and I'm like, this is it, all the Farah sass happening right now, and then she didn't say it! It was just a fan thing, and I'm like, go you for thinking about that, because you know, that's clever, but it wasn't in the book and I really needed it to be in the book. Um, anyway, Thera does get her own back, you know, because she shows them all what a badass she is. But, you know, and just in that moment, I would have really liked her to take that little bit of empowerment and just be like, yo, you suck. All I can say is, I am just so happy that Faisan got a happy ending. That was all I wanted from this book. I was like, anyone else except as anyone else except Azriel can die, and I will handle it. But Faisan needs a happy ending, and they got it, I'm so happy that they got their happy ending, and I just want Faisan babies. Sarah J Maas, please? Please Faisan babies in the novellas, please, please, please. I was discussing this on Instagram with someone, and we were trying to figure out, if they have a child, will the child inherit all of Faisan's powers? Or will it just inherit the Night Court powers? Because imagine, okay, imagine, Faisan baby, all the powers of the Seven High Lords, amplified by the fact that Reese is the most powerful High Lord in existence. So they get all the powers amplified by so much power that child could destroy the universe. But it wouldn't because it would be good because it would be a face and baby. Oh! Face and babies give me all the feels. I've read a couple of fanfics. I've been reading so much fanfiction to try and get myself out of the complete book hangover that the Akatar series in general has put me in and face and baby fics are my favourite. Apart from Face and Smut Fix, because Face and Smut Fix are everything. <laughs> On to other pairings. Nessian. I've never really been a Nessian shipper. I didn't like them in Akamath because I'm not a huge fan of Nesta in general, and I just thought Cassian was too good for her. I was like, why are you so in love with someone who's so mean to you? Yeah, I'm not I'm not big on Nessian, in all honesty. <laughs> but they did grow on me in this, and I guess I ship Nessian now in the way that, fine, they're good together, but I don't ship them, like they're not one of my ships, you know? I'm not gonna put actual love investment into shipping them, but I'm just like, I vaguely ship them in that, and I'm like, yeah, they can be together and I'm happy with that, but I don't like ship them, you know? They are not an OTP, I do not hardcore ship them. I'm not gonna read Nessian fanfics, you know? Just, it, it, it does nothing for me, I'm sorry. They're fine, but mm. Elaine is a difficult one for me, because part of me is so for canon, so the fact that she's mated with Lucian, it makes me like she has to get together with Lucian, right? But then she and Azriel are really sweet together. I don't know, I kind of think, right, that I want Elaine to get together with Lucian, because I want Lucian to be happy because he's my little baby. But I also want Azriel to have a happy ending, but I kind of would like to see him get an original character. I'd like to see someone new come in and just sweep him off his feet and make him happy because I feel like out of all of them, he just deserves happiness so much. He is such a small little cinnamon bun and just deserves all the happiness and he's not gonna get that and oh, I want Azrael to be happy. So I'm not sure if I ship, what is it, Aslan? Elreal. I'm not sure if I ship Elreal or Illusion, but I think I'm leaning more towards Illusion with As getting his own bay because I want As to be happy. I also want Morrigan to be happy, but in all honesty, I have a bit of a problem with Morrigan's character. I feel like making Morrigan gay was just a bit forced. I don't have a problem with the fact that she's gay, I have a problem with how it came out, you know? I understand why she would have needed to hide that part of herself when she was in the Court of Nightmares, because they they probably would have killed her for it, you know? But like, the Inner Circle are so wonderfully welcoming and loving that they wouldn't have cared, and they would have kept her secret. If she didn't want people to know, they would never have told Sol but they also would not at all have judged her for it, which she should know. So it's not her being gay that I have a problem with, it's the fact that she didn't feel like she could tell anyone. And I have a serious problem with that because I feel like it undermines this amazing relationship that she has with these people who are completely her family. She and Feyre are so close 
and she never felt like she could tell it before. She and Resand are so close and she never felt like she could tell him before. I can even not understand telling like Kaz and Azriel because that might be a little bit awkward, like Azriel's in love with her. Cassian was the first guy she ever slept with, so fine. But yeah, just I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to make a statement about how difficult it is for LGBTQI plus people to be accepted in society, which I understand and I can sympathise with that. But I just, I didn't feel like it was the right way to go about things. I feel like it should have been made less of an issue and it should have come out in the second book. <laughs> Going into this book I was a little bit like, oh I don't know if I actually want Morrigan and Azriel to get together because I feel like he's been pining after her for 500 years and she's kind of just brushed him off. So I feel like he will always love her more than she loves him and that's not a good p balance for a relationship. So I was like, oh love the idea of them together but not sure if that's actually a good idea. And then when it came out that she was gay, I was like, yeah, this stops all my inner conflict because clearly they're not gonna work. And that was another thing, like, she strung Asriel along for 500 years and she could have ended all of his pain and helped him move on by just telling him that she was gay. So I just wish that that had been dealt with differently. I just, I don't feel like that was the best way for her to come out. On the note of Morgan, though, something that I didn't think about until it was pointed out to me. Helion is Lucian's dad. And then Morrigan sleeps with Helion. Which was something I didn't connect while I was reading the book until afterwards when someone was like, Morrigan slept with Lucian's dad. And I know that it's not weird because they're Fae and like their aging process is so different. So it's not like someone my age sleeping with someone my dad's age. It was just really weird that Morrigan and Lucian are kind of contemporaries. They're in the same like generation of Fae, but then yeah, <laughs> just it was weird for me. It was too, too weird for me. I feel like Briaxis is everyone's new favourite character. Everyone loves Briaxis. He's so cool, kind of like sinister and creepy, but the sinister and creepy that everyone loves. He was really cool, he was such a great addition to the story. I'm really glad Ianthe finally died. She deserved it after what she did. So I got, it was getting to the end of the book and I was like, Suri, no Suri, where's my, where's my, where's our Suri? And then he came in and I was like, yay, finally! And then he died and he was a dreamer. That, that, that scene almost brought me to tears, like, that was probably the most difficult scene I've had to read in the entire series. It was so heartbreaking. Like, I love how the serial have just crept into our hearts and no one ships face sand harder than the serial guys. <laughs> the way that they've wormed their way into the fandom's hearts just makes me so happy. So the fact that one of them had to die like that, just, it was heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I am so excited with the novellas to see where Amryn's character goes because after everything that happened and the cauldron and her becoming mortal, I'm excited to see how her character is going to change and also I need some more Amryn and Varian in my life. Like, those two just... Some Amryn and Varian smut would be hardcore. I feel like those two would be into like some serious like BDSM shit. <sighs> Overall, I just loved this book. The writing got better, we got to see even more of the world, we got to hear more about the history of the world. The writing just got even stronger, the character development got even better. The one thing that I really liked about this book was you get to see Feyre come into herself as a high lady. As in Akamath, she's kind of learning to control her powers and all that stuff and you see how strong she is which is really interesting. But here, you get to see her really come into her own as this really powerful, strong, stately woman who has so much power, not just physically in herself, but politically. The way she explodes at the meeting between the High Lords was just amazing. Like, I was so proud of her in that moment, but also I was just like, what are you doing? Just everything about this, everything, everything about this book was Perfection. It's not my favourite book in the series, I am going to admit that. I still prefer Akamath to Akawar. I think just because Feyre and Rhysand's relationship developing was so great for me and seeing them already together and like settled together was amazing as well. But they're just, this book just 
didn't have a chapter 54. That's all I'm gonna say. Also, I would have been so happy if this book was longer. The ending felt a bit rushed to me. It felt a bit like she was nearing her deadline and suddenly everything needed to happen, which is the same problem I had with Akamath. I don't know if that's just how she likes to write things. Does that happen in Throne of Glass as well? where the, the beginning is kind of really drawn out, which I love because I love the character development and the relationship building and the world building, but then the end kind of gets condensed. So I wish that both in Akamath and Akabor, there were just like an extra 200 pages. So the ending was kind of extended by like 100 pages and then just, I want 100 pages of happiness, guys, especially at the end of this one. I just wanted like some face sand, being happy, settled in their castle, fairy founding out she's pregnant and all these things just setting up for the future novellas because I feel like Faysan's story is done which scares me. She's left open endings for Nessian and Morrigan and Azrael and Elaine and Lucian and that's great you know because I want some novellas and some stories about them too but guys I need me some more Faysan and she has not left really an opening for the need for more Faysan. And I'm just really hoping that she loves them enough that she's going to hold on to them. Basically, I just had to make this video to get all of my feels about this book out. And probably when I watch it back to edit it, I'm going to think of a million other things that I wanted to talk about that I didn't talk about. So message me on here, on Instagram, on absolutely anywhere, and just talk to me about this book. All my social media is in the description, so just talk to me about this book. I want to talk about this book. Yeah, I know that there's stuff I've forgotten to talk about, so I want to talk to you guys about that. So send me messages, talk to me about the book, tell me about your favourite parts, your favourite characters, the parts you didn't like, the parts you did like. I want to know everything. Yeah, basically I just loved it. I am currently starting the Throne of Glass series to try and fulfil the Sarah J Maas feels. And when I'm not doing that, I'm reading fanfiction about Faysand and Mariel because as much as Mariel I didn't think would work in the books and now is definitely not going to work in the books, I still like the idea of them, as I said. So fanfiction gives me an outlet for that because it lets me see them together in a perfect world where they would work together and that makes me happy. Burning Glass and fanfiction are basically getting me through this so if you guys got any good fanfictions send them my way. I am trash for Faysand and Mariel, especially Faysand. I loved it, it was wonderful, it was perfect. 4.999 stars from me just because it didn't quite reach the epicness of Akamath for me and Akamath is a 5 million out of 10 stars. Let me know your thoughts, let me know your feels. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you all again very very soon. Bye!